Hello, my name is Dr. Omende, and um, we complete the series on histology of the nervous tissue. So before we begin neuroglial cells, there's something I forgot to mention in the previous video on um, the neurons. So you need to remember that as um, the axon of neurons are usually covered by myelin sheath and this myelin sheath is usually interrupted yeah uh, what do i mean by um, interrupted so it's not usually continuous so you'll see some portions of myelin this blue here is myelin and then there's interruption there that's the node of Ranvier. then you again see myelin and the node of Ranvier. so myelin sheath is just when a glial cell wraps its cell membrane around the axon of a neuron it forms myelin and it's just for insulation so that you improve on conduction or other transmission of the signal so that you don't lose the signal so it increases um, the speed of conduction because of the insulation so that's the myelin sheet then the other thing i didn't mention was that a single neuron is usually covered by endo endoneurium and then a bundle of neurons or fascicles, neuron of uh, bundles or fascicles, a small group of neurons, their axons are covered by um, perineurium and um, the, a whole nerve is covered by um, epineurium. So remember like in a muscle we said a single muscle cell is covered by endoneurium then a fascicle of muscles by sorry endomesium a fascicle by perimesium and the whole muscle bulk is covered by epimesium now in nervous tissue a single um the axon of a single uh, root nerve root is covered by endoneurium then a bundle of uh, the axons will be covered by perineurium and the whole nerve is covered by the axon of a whole um, nerve made up of many axons will be covered by um, epineurium so then we now begin on neuroglial cells these are support cells so um, we have different neuroglial cells based on which part of the nervous system so within the peripheral nervous system we have the satellite cells and the Schwann cells Within the peripheral nervous system, we have satellite cells and Schwann cells. Satellite cells surround neuron, neuronal cell bodies within ganglia. A ganglion is a collection of neuronal cell bodies within the peripheral nervous system. So satellite cells will surround these neuronal cell, cell bodies in the ganglion and they help to regulate a good metabolic and um, chemical environment for the neurons so to regulate oxygen carbon dioxide and nutrients and neurotransmitter levels around the neurons so that those that, that, that's a function of satellite cells they are located in the ganglia and they help to ensure a good nutrition good metabolic and chemical environment for neurons then another cell of uh, glial cell of the peripheral nervous system is the schwann cell and schwann cells they wrap their cell membranes around axons therefore myelinating axons within the peripheral nervous system and they also help in the repair process after injury so myelination and repair process after injury then we go to the central nervous system we have the ependymal cells the ependymal cells line the ventricles of the brain and also line the central canal of the spinal cord what does that tell you these regions contain csf therefore the pendymal cells assist in producing CSF, circulating CSF, and also monitoring CSF. So those are the functions of ependymal cells. Production, circulation, and monitoring CSF because they line the brain ventricles and central canal of the spinal cord. Then another glial cells in the central nervous system are the oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes myelinate axons in the CNS. Remember in the PNS, myelination was by Schwann cells. In CNS is oligodendrocytes, and this they also provide a structural framework structural mm -hmm. framework to the neurons then another uh, glial cell in the cns are the astrocytes what are the functions of the astrocytes these ones maintain the blood brain barrier 
what is blood brain barrier blood brain barrier is a barrier that protects um, the brain from harmful substances in blood so if your blood has some toxins these toxins cannot get to the brain because of blood brain barrier it's a selective barrier and it's formed by capillary endothelial cells lying on the basement membrane and the food processes of astrocytes so those are the components of blood brain barrier astrocytes also provide a structural and chemical um, a good structural and chemical or other metabolic environment for the neurons to function so they will regulate ions dissolve gases and nutrients and make sure that they are within a good uh, range to enable the neurons to function. Astrocytes also absorb and recycle neurotransmitters and they help to also form scar tissue. So those are the functions of astrocytes. Maintain blood-brain barrier, provide structural support, regulate ion, nutrients and dissolved gases, absorb, recycle neurotransmitters and help to form scar tissue after injury. Then we have microglial cells. These remove cell debris and waste and pathogens by phagocytosis. So they are members of the monocytic phagocytic system. They um, come from the um, mesenchyme. So they help, they carry out an immune role because they're able to phagocytose pathogens. So neuroglial cells form half the volume of the nervous system. The other half is by neurons, and there are many types of neuroglial cells in the CNS and PNS. So um, we've talked of um, different neuroglial cells, like the microglial cells, which um, um, phagocytose microbes, epidermal cells lining the ventricles and um, central canal, so they produce and circulate CSF, then oligodendrocytes that cause myelination within the central nervous system, while Schwann cells causing myelination within the um, peripheral nervous system. Then astrocytes that help to form scar tissue, they form blood-brain barrier, they maintain structural and metabolic environment for the neurons to function, and so on and so forth. So we have in the CNS, epidermal cells, astrocytes, microglial, and oligodendrocytes. And we said epidermal cells, they form an epithelium, which is called epidyma, that lines central canal of the spinal cord and the ventricles of the brain. They usually secrete cerebrospinal fluid, and they contain cilia or microvilli that help to circulate cerebrospinal fluid. They also monitor CSF, and they contain stem cells for, for repair. Stem cells are always for repair. Then astrocytes. Astrocytes maintain blood-brain barrier. Yeah, they maintain blood-brain barrier, and this barrier protects the brain from toxic substances with the blood. And we've said it's a barrier formed by capillary endothelial cells lying on the basement membrane and the food processes of astrocytes. Astrocytes also form a structural framework for neurons in the CNS, and they help to form scar tissue during repair of damaged neuron tissue. They ensure a good neural development and control the interstitial environment by ensuring good nutrition, good um, oxygen, and you know, um, generally chemical environment for the functions of the neurons. Then we have microglial cells, which you say they are members of the monocytic phagocytic system originating from the mesenchyme. They migrate through neural tissue, and their main role is an immune function. So they clean up cellular debris and waste products and pathogens through phagocytosis. So remember, they are not neural in origin. They are not ectodermal in origin. They are members of the monocytic phagocytic system, just like osteoclasts, and they are um, from mesenchyme. Okay. Then we have oligodendrocytes. These ones contact other neuronal cell bodies and they wrap their axons to form myelin sheath in the central nervous system. So myelination is important because it helps to insulate the axons and when you insulate you don't lose the action potential and that way you're able to also increase the action potential and myelin makes the nerves to appear white. So um, then uh, my, when an axon is myelinated, some portions are myelinated, some are not myelinated. So that's how we have your internodes. So the internodes are the myelinated segments, while the nodes of Ranvia are the gaps between the internodes. So at the nodes of Ranvia, there is no myelination. But within the internodes, there is myelination. 
Then we go to the uh, peripheral nervous system, which has two neuroglial cells. We say the satellite cells, which are the amphicytes, and the Schwann cells, which are the neurilemocytes. Uh, so the satellite cells usually surround the ganglia. So they are the glial cells within the ganglia. Ganglia are a collection of neuronal cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. So satellite cells help to regulate the environment around the neuronal cell bodies in the ganglia. So structural and metabolic environment generally. So you need to know what are the differences between ganglia and nuclei. Collection of neuronal cell bodies in the CNS is like in the CNS is nuclear and collection of neuronal cell body in the PNS, we call that ganglia. So the ganglia are surrounded by satellite cells. Then the last um, cell in the peripheral nervous system is the Schwann cell. This one helps to form myelin sheath around the peripheral nerve axons. Mm -hmm. And also um, you need to know that one Schwann cell sheath um, usually provides a sheath over one segment of the axon. So many Schwann cells actually are responsible for myelination of the axon of a neuron. So you can see here, you have a Schwann cell wrapping its cell membrane here. So the Schwann cell that will cause myelination here is different from the one that will cause myelination. And these are different um, um, neurons. So if you can check here, you have an axon here and an axon here. Okay, and an axon here. So all this, this is a Schwann cell causing myelination. This is another Schwann cell here. Thank you very much.